Hey there, it's Chair, um, and I'm here to go over my Woods Week 5 game that I played versus Seth, aka SW087, I think that's his username on Discord and, and YouTube as well. He makes awesome YouTube content um, that I'm super jealous of, and he gets way more views than I do, so go check him out, he's way better than I am. Um, and he also helps, helps me prep quite a bit, so that's super cool. Uh, yeah, he's a cool guy. Anyway, uh, his team, we're going to do post-con, so this game already happened. Um, his team is Corviknight, Darmanitan, Morpico, Blastoise, Verizion, Quillfish, <clears throat> Delayed, Slurpuff, Stuntank, Mudsdale, and Al. Of course, my team, Dracozolt, Mandibuzz, Gigalith. Before this, actually, uh, I made a trade. Uh, so we'll talk about that after. But I have Draladon, not Sylveon, for this game. Rabombi, Quagsire. And then instead of Alola Dugtrio, we have Mr. Mime, Galarian form for this battle. And then Thwacky, Golisopod, Salazzle, and Mawile. Um, and this is the sixth that I chose to bra bring. Uh, this is a specially defensive Quagsire. Uh, it is mainly for... Um, his <coughs> uh, special threats like Quillfish and Stunt Tank and Slurpuff uh, in case he was um, like a Calm Mind uh, Slurpuff or something like that and it deals with Corviknight with very little physical defense anyway so uh, I ran special just in case unaware of course because he has so much setup then we had Rabombi with the heavy duty boots and four attacks, uh, just lots of coverage, gets hits anything on his team really uh, for neutral damage. We had a toxic protect substitute stally kind of salazzle. We had a gigalith uh, with the smooth rock to set up sand for Drake's ult. Uh, this one was packing gravity, stealth rock, body press, and earthquake. Gravity if he decided that his core rank could. Uh, to, could wall me. I could set up a gravity and hit it with super effective body presses and earthquakes. Um, then we had Choice Bandit, Sand Rush, Dracozolt. Um, I just figured he has one of the better counters to Dracozolt in Modsdale. Um, so I decided to uh, counter that by running Choice Band and Adam and Outrage did a lot to it. Um, and then we have Boots, 3 attacks, Spikes, Golisopod, which I tend to bring quite often. Alright, so let's just get into the match. Uh, we'll switch sides here. I'm on his side. Um, but you can see he leads Corviknight. I lead with the Quagsire. Thinking uh, Darmanitan could lead. Thinking uh, Blastoise could lead. Or the... Oh, and Quagsire was also here for Shell Smash Blastoise. Uh, if he decided to do that, which he has done in the past. Um, and it also stops Corviknight pretty well. And it handles non-choice banded Darmanitan pretty well as well. Um, so this is a super good game. Uh, he turns out right away. Uh, it does quite a bit, so I know he's offensive, and I just go for a Scald right off the bat uh, as he swaps into Blastoise, which we'll find out is specifically made to beat this Quagsire, uh, which is super cool prep on his part. <clears throat> it's kind of a, a toxic sub uh, um, set to sub up on my, on my Quagsire. It also has Protect. So super good ability to stall out my Quagsire in the end. I go into Rabombi there, and then predicting his switch into Corviknight, I go into Salazzle. Um, and he U-turns out. Here he U-turns, and I totally did not even think, but he outspeeds me there, um, which reveals his Scarf, which <laughs> um, you'll see I did not realize until later on. Um, but, uh, I get up a Toxic on the Mudsdale, as he sets up rocks, I set up a sub, and this is exactly what Salazzle is supposed to do. Similar to his Blastoise, uh, it is supposed to wear down and absolutely annoy the hell out of Seth and his Pokemon. Uh, it's faster than everything on his team, barring Scarfed 
anything. Um, obviously, Corbinite was scarfed at this point. Um, and so I get a Toxic off onto Manitan as well, as he had clicked uh, Rest with his Mudsdale. He was Resto Chesto. He goes for Earthquake right off the bat. We figure out uh, that by me going for Substitute here, I figured he'd be Scarfed with Manitan, because I hadn't realized Scarfed uh, Corbinite at this point. Um, so I go for Sub, thinking he'd outspeed me, but he doesn't. So he goes for a slow Earthquake, and that'll actually force me to switch out into the Lysopod, which we take any hit from this pretty well. He goes into Corviknight, as I set up a Spike, I think I do. Um, and he goes for Brave Bird. It does a lot of damage. I knew I could live um, and be able to come back in first impression something. I go right back into Salazzle, not knowing that he's Scarfed again, not realizing. <laughs> and he goes right for the Brave Bird, as I take him out with Flamethrower. So Salazzle picks up a kill. Obviously there in chat, I realized that he is Scarfed. And then he goes into Blastoise and he clicks Aqua Jet. So it takes me off guard quite a bit there. I lose my Salazzle to this Blastoise. But here I get a free swap into Drakezolt. Because I know all four of Blastoise's moves and it can't touch me at all. Um, so choice ban Drakezolt outside of the Sand. I go for the Raw Outrage, no Fairy type. And it absolutely chunks the Mudsdale. Um, I had run pretty passive sets in the past, maybe a substitute uh, leftover set is what I had done in the past, and uh, <clears throat> so he probably expected something like that, but Choice Band Adamant does loads to everything on his team, so it takes up a month still there. I sack the Lysopod to the Brizion and go into Rabombi, thinking I can get good damage and maybe force him out with a Moonblast, but he actually stays in because he's AV. Uh, which I could have expected probably, and he takes me out with Stone Edge, which is okay because Rabombi um, didn't Oko anything anymore. Um, now that he's AB and probably uh, uh, a faster delayed. So I go into Gigalith here to get up the sand, and this is where I start to misplay. Um, I get up rocks, which is not a misplay, <laughs> but uh, here, right here, this turn right here, where I let him take me down to. 13%. I now live a rocks on re-entry, um, and here I should have gone straight to Drakezolt, because Sacred Sword would not have done that much, and I would have been able to uh, kill him with an Outrage after. And I think if I swapped right here and went into Drakezolt and got a three-turn Outrage, or even a two-turn Outrage, um, I would have been able to win the game. Um, having said that, I go for body press, and the sand takes out Brizion. So right here, I should have swapped, because uh, Blastoise can't do anything to Drakezolt. But he goes for a sub, so I didn't want him to get a sub up. I think this was my my um, my thought process, was I didn't want him to get up a sub um, and go into Drakezolt on the sub, and then have to break it, take a Toxic, and then get worn down from there. So I went for Body Press hoping that it would break the sub, but he's so defensive that it doesn't break the sub. And as you can see in in the team builder before, um, my Gigalith had like 200 defense IVs and was a positive defense nature. Um, so it, it had a bunch of defense, so Body Press should be doing a lot to anything. Um, but Blastoid takes it very well and does not break the sub. And now I die to an Aqua Jet. And now I get on, get Dregzold in on a sub, which is what I didn't want to do, and he's able to stall with the sand here. Uh, so he goes for Protect, obviously gets Leftovers, I break the sub on the next one with Bolt Beak. He misses a Toxic, which is pretty big for him, um, but he's still able to stall with the sand, which is the big issue for me. Because without the sand, I can't outspeed the Gallade or the Darmanitan, and Dregzold will just end up dying. So I end up taking the Blastoise out eventually, and he's able to go into Darmanitan, revealing that he's actually heavy duty boots, and he outspeeds me with Earthquake and kills me. And at this point, I know it's over, but I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that Gallade does not have Leaf Blade. Um, I'm able to stall out the Darmanitan here as he ends up dying to Toxic, which is another kill for Salazzle. And yeah, then Gallade is able to just come in and click Leaf Blade, even if I was Rindoberry. There was nothing I could do. I think it did like 160% to 
minimum to uh, like 48 defense Quagsire. So, uh, yeah. So, super close match. Uh, I think my one misplay was sacking the Gigalith, obviously. Um, I think what I should have done is saved the Gigalith um, and then uh, gone into Drake's old Force Blastoise out. And then hopefully the sand would be over by then. Um, uh, if it's not, go into Quagsire on either the Darmanitan or the Delayed. Um, <clears throat> and then uh, sack the Gigalith once sand is over to get the sand back up. And then win from Drake with Drake's ult from there because uh, Delayed and Darmanitan both did not take ult leaps at all. Um, and obviously Blastoise didn't either. Um, but GG to my man Seth. Um, super good prep on his part um, with the Scarf uh, Corviknight and the <clears throat> the Blastoise to handle the Quagsire. Um, yeah, so we dropped to two and three, I believe, and I think we're minus five differential, uh, something like that. But close game obviously doesn't hurt us too bad. Um, hope we can bounce back next week. I think we're playing Al and the Minetrix, I believe. He's 5-0, and oh, so Seth was also uh, is 5-0 and oh now uh, after this match. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm going to be doing a post-com for next week at the Woods as well. Haven't decided on whether I'm going to do post-com for IPL week 3 yet. Um, probably, I would say. Uh, just because, honestly, post-coms... Um, quite uh they they help a lot i've realized because they take the the stress of the live uh, out of it and so i can focus more on doing calcs and really thinking through my plays uh whereas in a video like this i kind of feel rushed um to get it over with um which is i know it's not necessary i know people who are watching these are going to watch the battle no matter how long it takes probably um, because they're interested in watching my thought process, not necessarily watching the event, because either they've seen the replay or, uh, or they're just from another league and they've never, um, seen my team. Anyway, um, so back to the changes that I made. Um, so for week five, which is we're going into, um, Cooper S, who is another coach in this league, uh, put up on the chat that Sylveon uh, was on the block, uh, the trading block. Um, and so I have a Robami, which is my fairy type, but it's very frail, and it's obviously an offensive uh, fairy type. Um, and I don't have many uh, special walls. Um, I have <coughs> Mandibuzz which can do it decently well. And then I had uh, Mr. Mon Galarian, which usually you should be using a more offensive set uh, than a defensive set. So I have I have Quagsire, I have Gigalith, I have Mandibuzz, um, and I had Duraludon even, uh, who were very physically defensive based and uh, pretty bad on the special side. Obviously Gigalith and Sand is decent um, and Mandibuzz can be run special, but uh, not the greatest. So he wanted something with uh, hazards, uh, to set hazards um, in return. So Sylveon was one point above Duraludon. So I offered him Duraludon and I knew that I'd have to make, I'd have to make a trade. Uh, I knew that I would have to make a trade because I had used all my points. So I'd have to make a trade before, um, before that and to move uh, down Amon, so I could have extra points, so I could get Sylveon, and he ended up agreeing, so Duraludon for Sylveon, from me to Cooper S. I did stop the recording. But yeah, we get Sylveon, I've used Sylveon lots of times, obviously, uh, does not have, uh, no, it does have Heal Bell, yeah, it has Heal Bell, um, it has Toxic in this, because this is But yeah, um, and so the trade that I made to, uh, we had also only brought Duraludon once, and 
it wasn't really fitting in what I wanted to do with the team. Um, so yeah, so obviously being a sand team, one of my ideas to move down was to trade Galarian Mr. Mime, who um, had great typing, um, but just didn't really live up to the offensive potential that I thought it could, and I'd ended up using it a lot in a more utility role with rapid spin and stuff like that. Uh, so I traded, I think it was worth seven points. I traded it down for a Lowland Oak Trio, which I think was worth five points. Uh, so that would give me the extra point that I needed to move up and get Sylveon. So this is a, another, a second Sand Abuser for my team. Um, it's a Ground Steel, obviously, like a mini Excadrill. Um, it's got pretty bad stats uh, other than attack and speed. Obviously, it's a Duck Trio, that's what they do. Um, but 110 speed gave me a speed that I did not have, and it gets Sand Force. So it's another Rocker, and it's another Sand Abuser. Um, and I just thought it was cool. I've always wanted to use it in Sand. Um, so yeah, so the trades was, I sent Drellid onto Cooper, Cooper sent Sylveon to me, and then I traded Mr. Mime Galarian form to the free agency, uh, and then I picked up um, a Lowland Duck Trio. So yeah, that's all I got for you this week. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, for a game against Al. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Click like if you liked the video comment what you thought of the game and you have to like because dust ox wallpaper is fantastic <laughs> yeah all right goodbye y'all